Hey, it's Spoonie, and it's time for the August update on the progress of Kitten Space Agency, the spiritual successor to Kerbal Space Program led by Dean Hall and a team at Rocketworks that includes not only the original creator of Kerbal Space Program, Harvester, but several influential modders from the KSP community like Blackrack, along with plenty of other seriously talented individuals. And if this is your first time hearing about this game, I've put together a quick recap that should bring you up to speed and answer most of the basic questions that you might have, and it will also help you follow along more easily with what's being covered in this video. And if this isn't your first time seeing one of my videos, don't worry, you don't have to watch the recap again, just skip ahead to the chapter titled New Updates. First, this game is meant to be the spiritual successor to Kerbal Space Program 2. It is being built from the ground up on a custom framework called Brutal designed specifically for this game. Brutal gives the developers full control over just about everything and allows them to quickly experiment with new features and ideas, like shadows from moons on planets which went from conception to proof of concept implementation in just three hours. Yes, there will be mod support. In fact, this game is being developed with mod support as a cornerstone, and everything in the game is essentially a mod itself which can be altered. The game will have multiplayer, and the groundwork for this feature is being baked into the game so that it can be more easily added when the time comes. We don't know if it will launch with this feature, but we do know that they are planning for it. The game will have interstellar travel. The game will also be DRM free, meaning you will not have to have an internet connection to play the game. The game will also, at least ideally, be free to play. This is still a little bit up in the air as the developers will obviously need to make money from the game. It may be through a pay what you want system or other voluntary support. We will have to wait for further clarification down the road, but we do know that Dean Hall very much wants this game to be released for free. While we don't have a lot of information on system requirements just yet, the game seems to already be incredibly performant, with at least some of the work being tested on a 2080 Super at 1440p, often achieving an FPS in the hundreds. This is a good sign that you probably won't need a 5090 to play this game at the higher settings with a decent frame rate. This performance boost is in part thanks to a system of rendering called spherical billboards, which swaps out pre-rendered meshes as you approach an orbital body rather than rendering them in real time you will be able to seamlessly switch from ship view to orbital view or to another ship around another body without the need for loading screens thanks to the utilization of instantiable physics and the brutal framework, which allows everything to play by its own set of rules rather than everything being tied together in a persistent scene. This also gives the modders a straightforward path to adding, editing, or completely remaking systems. And those are the key points which I hope will answer a lot of the questions those who are new to the game might have. Okay, so this month is admittedly a little light on content updates. We only had a total of four updates over the last few weeks, so things have been a little bit quieter. But just a couple days ago, we got one massive update, which covers our very first look at customized vehicle parts and the vehicle assembly bay. It also gives us some insights into the art direction that the team is pursuing for Kitten Space Agency. So even though things have been a little quiet, I think next month might be a biggie. So. Let's get into it. First up, we got these stunning pictures by Blackrack showing off an early water surface preview. There is going to be a whole ocean system, which I can only assume is going to make creating custom planets that much easier later on. And right now, these waves we are seeing are just placeholder Gerstner waves. They're used for testing shading and geometry along with integration with other systems. Later on, these waves will be replaced with a more realistic system. So I did have to look up what a Gerstner wave was and it's a bit more complicated than I was expecting. But suffice it to say, it refers to the type of waves you would see while looking out at the ocean on a relatively low winds and calm weather day. And that has me again thinking about weather patterns and how extensive those will be in Kitten Space Agency. Are we going to see weather affect oceans and waves? Because that would be incredible. I'm also about to speculate a ton here, so just bear with me. But in Kerbal Space Program, there was a lot of mods and over time, a lot of improvements surrounding watercraft and buoyancy. In the early days of Kerbal Space Program, the oceans were actually just blue land. But it is starting to look like oceans and watercraft might be a major focus for Kitten Space Agency right from the beginning. I'm not sure if the developers have talked much, if at all, about the inclusion of boats or water-specific craft, but I would really love to see that included at some point in KSA. It's obviously not the primary focus of the game, but think about how much fun it would be to build a watercraft that you have to then launch and land on some ocean planet or moon. And after all, Harvester's most recent game, Kid Hack, does have boats included in the type of craft that you can create and pilot. So this is my newest question that I am hoping gets answered pretty soon. I don't know, do you guys want the ability to build watercraft? Let me know in the comments below if that's something that matters to you and if it's something you felt KSP was missing. 
Next, we got a preview of the current work in progress for a height map decal terrain modifiers. This gives the developers the ability to create points of interest using hand-placed terrain details in desired locations. They can also be slightly higher quality than the planet's base height textures. Link said to consider it more like putting a sticker on something rather than painting in details. This process can be used to create interesting locations on orbital bodies, and in the attached video we can see an example of the modifier's dynamics at work. This is just really cool, and will no doubt make adding points of interest that much easier for modders and developers down the road. And this is probably a good place to mention that we also got some clarifications last month in the comments section about the use of the real solar system. BlackRack commented that most of the work is really going towards building systems that can be used to render different planets. Some work has gone into configuring the solar system, but it's really not a lot of work compared to building the underlying systems. And most of the solar system configurations can be used as starting points or references when configuring custom systems. So while I still hope that the real solar system is ultimately used as an interstellar location that you can visit, it appears my speculation that it won't be scrapped because of the work that has gone into it was just that speculation. But we will have to wait and see what ultimately becomes of this real solar system when the game finally launches. We do know that it has been said that it will likely be used in the early access period, and that a custom system will be built and used as the primary system down the road, possibly with the help of the community. What is important here though, as Blackrack said, are the systems that are being created that will make building and customizing planets, moons, and entire systems possible and maybe even relatively easy thanks to all the hard work that's being poured into this foundation. So big thank you to BlackRack for that clarification. Next, Lynx also gave us some work in progress shots of procedural sand dunes and terrain erosions. He mentions that both don't require any fancy simulations to run and can be derived given just a single position, making it very computationally cheap. Lynx is also working on extending this work to arbitrary terrain, not just underlying noise. And that's what this image of this crater is showing off. This is realistic because while hydraulic erosion doesn't occur on worlds without precipitation, rocks and regolith can still slump down steep angles and create thick runoff patterns. For those that are interested in this erosion code and want to take a closer look, it was heavily adapted from a shader toy created by Clay John, and there is an included link that I will also put in the description below. And finally, the parts update. Daishi, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, let us know that there have been some internal discussions about how to add depth and modularity to the experience of Kit and Space Agency when building craft, and that they have been exploring concepts that were seen in some of the Kerbal Space Program mods, like Restock, BDB, Universal Storage, among others that utilized a concept called part switching. Part switching is where a single part has multiple variants and functions, giving craft designs both greater utility and visual depth, because one part can be adjusted in the assembly bay to suit a specific mission, allowing players the freedoms to adjust rocket stacks, appearance, and function without tearing down an entire craft and starting over. We also learned that Kitten Space Agency will have a service module system where specific parts, which they are calling bay parts currently, will be able to cleanly interface with other parts that can be plugged into them, giving them a more aerodynamic look and function when placed with other radial and stack mounted parts. The bay parts will have a common profile and will fit in every available service module cleanly including sockets and more advanced capsules. So as far as I understand this, where in KSP you were often slapping modules on the exterior of your ship, in KSA we will have the ability to basically plug them into sockets built into some of the ship parts. This seems like a better system overall, and it will definitely give craft a cleaner look and feel. Plus I'm sure it will help with losing experiments and modules to re-entry heat and drag. This first batch of parts that is being created will set a foundation for both of those concepts that were described in the post, and we even got a look at a few of those parts, like this medium capsule that will hold two kittens and will have a few customizable skin choices. Options for crew passage on both ends, along with a substructure that can be used as a lightweight rover body. This part took inspiration from the Gemini space capsule, although it is not intended to be a direct replica. This also shows three of the described sockets for bay parts mentioned earlier, and will also include a cavity in the substructure for other radially attached parts. And as far as the art style is concerned, it is mentioned that they are aiming for a visual style similar to the restock mod which revamped the graphics in Kerbal Space Program. There are of course going to put their own spin on it, and plan to push the boundaries just a little bit. They want to bring a retro futurism cassette punk vibe into the game, which is something that they brought into their KSP Universal Storage 2 Science Part mod. They suggested googling an artist by the name of Paul Papera who they feel represents this style, and they are often using this artist as a reference point. They also gave us some insights into the technical side of things, mentioning that they have doubled the KSP radial standard of 24 polygons around a part circumference to 48, and part diameters are now standardized internally in tidy meter-by-meter -meter steps. So this answers something I have been wondering about since we got our first look at the command module placeholder that they have been using whenever they need to represent a ship or test functionality. I personally think this all looks great, and I also think that they have found a great reference and represent 
representation for the art direction that I was actually hoping to see. But what do you guys think? Are you pleased with this art style direction or were you hoping for something different? Personally, I'm really excited to see these ship examples get a few skins so that we can get a real sense of the vibe that they are trying to cultivate in Kitten Space Agency. And it will also just be really fun to see what personal touches they add to the game through their own spin on this art style. Overall, this was a huge month, even if the number of updates were limited. And like I said, I think we are going to see some really huge updates in the months ahead. So if you want to stay up to date on Kitten Space Agency and follow along with the development progress together, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you want to help my channel while also helping other people learn about Kitten Space Agency, be sure to give this video a massive thumbs up so that the algorithm knows to show it to more people. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.